Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get right to it. The LeBron James and Michael Jordan debate. This will be one of the most in-depth uh, evaluations or assessments of the LeBron James and Michael Jordan debate. I'm going to really dive into the numbers. Um, I've made a spreadsheet here as a comparison for the careers, and we'll tackle some other areas that really highlight their careers, highlight Michael Jordan and LeBron James. And so this debate has a lot to do with one, people not being able to watch Michael Jordan play. And then two, um, a generational gap in understanding um, the significance of LeBron James' transition to the NBA, and then, but also the significance and the impact that Michael Jordan had on the NBA. But let's take a look at the numbers now and... I'll give you a very clear view of why I think one or the other um, is hands down the better player, uh, the better, uh, has a has bigger impact, and had a better career. So if you just take a look at the numbers, you can look at LeBron James here. He starts off with his first seven seasons in Cleveland. Um, clearly a talented player, dominant. Uh, you look at him, he's averaging probably about 78 games played in his first seven seasons uh, with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And his best season was probably 30 points a game, um, seven rebounds, and seven assists. So you can look at his numbers and right off the bat, LeBron, I mean, he jumps out right at you as a high school player. Uh, Michael Jordan was different in that he played uh, some years of college basketball before he came in. But LeBron James, 20 points a game, first season, 79 games. I mean, for a high schooler to be able to make that transition, um, and not only just the talent jump and to play at that level, but to play 79 games as an 18, 19 year old, discipline, traveling, right? That's a different kind of cat. That's a different kind of guy. Um, and you see, second season, 27 points a game. Third season, 31 points a game. But more importantly, he's impacting winning and he's changing the entire franchise. So much so that he leads them to the championship game um, where he loses. He loses. But that was an incredible, incredible, incredible accomplishment for someone that's just getting into his league. I mean, under the age of 24, 25 years old, uh, amazing to the focus that was needed, the discipline. Right out, learning how to take care of your body. Um, LeBron was special those first seven years in Cleveland. And obviously, he makes that big change to Miami. Uh, again, they win two, champ, two chips there. And he comes back to Cleveland on a, an aggressive move, and he wins and he beats Golden State. So you look at this and you say, man, this guy is special. And even when you look at it, the last season in 2017 and 18, where he plays 82 games, right? This is when I believe LeBron was his most, was, was the truly the special player, was after he played at Cleveland for seven years, after he played at Miami, even though he won two chips, it was when that second stint at Cleveland, when he was willing those teams, you were seeing him play defense. I mean, this guy was playing 35, 40 minutes, defense, offense, controlling the pace, uh, so much so that they beat a Golden State team that had the best record ever. 
best in regular season record ever, and, and he was able to pull that off. That was a big win, and it put him in the conversation as, as, as one of the greatest players ever, if not the greatest player ever. Um, and you're looking at, he's almost, you know, 15 seasons in, 13, 14 seasons in, right? This is almost at the end of a, a normal person's career. Um, this would be almost at the end of Michael Jordan's career. But again, I'm not going to get Michael Jordan had some breaks, but I won't get into Michael. And then he goes to the Lakers. Struggles, but then he starts to pull the team together, right? He has Kyle Kuzman. He has Julius Randle. He has Lonzo Ball, right? They've got a talented squad. Um, and you've also got my man that played at Villanova, and he went to Portland, and then now he's in the Knicks. Josh Hart, I mean, that's your work. So he had LeBron had those guys. And I could say one of the things I personally didn't like was, man, you could see the potential of that team. You could clearly see the potential of that team. And you're like, come on, LeBron, just use all of that experience, all of that knowledge, everything you know, and pour into these guys. And these guys could probably get you a chip and longer. I think had he done that, Right now, his career would be easier. Had he poured into them, had he transferred that knowledge to those guys and said, I, this is who I'm going to win with. But Rich Paul, they negotiate a change with uh, Pelicans and they force a trade to get AD out of the Pelicans where AD basically sits down. And so all of this goes against the, the, the just the, it's against the com competitive nature, even as an individual. It's business, but even a part of the business, when you play into the business, it could actually hurt how you compete. And, I, and I'll get to that. It can hurt how you compete when you become so much money focused, so much forcing the hand. Oftentimes, it takes a lot for you to reset, to reset yourself, to get yourself back into the flow, back into the moment, back into focusing on the right things. And so they end up winning a chip. But AD, as great as he'll look at times, I think in the numbers say he was a better player when he was a Pelican. More energy not as injured, um, but on 80s part, big guys like that, you never hear it, and it's, it's, it's odd that they never talk about it, but big guys like that that have growth spurts and 80s body symmetry is, is different, 80 could be playing just sore and kind of hurt all the time. I'm not saying that, but he could be, right? And that could be a, a, a reason he misses a lot of games because – I mean, those big guys, it's a lot of weight, man. That's a lot of weight, tall. That's, I mean, it's a lot of stress on those guys' bodies, especially for a guy like uh, A.D. to say not built the same as a guy like Akeem Olajuwon. And see, a lot of these guys from the older, from the, the generation before don't get a lot of credit because they played 82 games, more brutal, more brutal, than today's NBA, and they were able to, to stay healthy. You look at a guy like Karl Malone, right? The number of 82 games, 81 games he played over the course. I mean, these guys didn't miss a game. Tough. And so LeBron forces the trade, forces the hand, and you could say, well, Bron had nothing to do with that. No, he identifies these are the players I think I need. AD is an up-and-coming player. I can ride into the sunset with this player. I could probably play till I'm 45, 46 with this guy. If AD can take on the reins of Lakers, that's what he's thinking. But you never know. Had you poured into Kyle Kuzma, Julius Randle, Lonzo, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, I mean, those guys were stacked. 
you know, and, and they all were young, so there was a reason LeBron did that, and this is one of the reasons he gets some of the criticism, but when you look at a guy like Brandon Ingram, I mean, he was just, you would pass it to him and you wouldn't see the ball back. You know, and Julius wasn't, you could see, I could see greatness in Julius, but I think other reasons, people just didn't really connect with Julius. They didn't, they didn't think he would become the player for other reasons. But if you watch him at Kentucky, he was a beast. You could see it then. You could easily see Julius as a guy give you 14, 15 rebounds and 12 points and great defense if that's what he was coached to do. You know, now he's more of a scorer, but Julius is a guy, he can up his energy be a great rebounder, 15, 16 rebounds. Yes, Julius Randle, 12 points because he's changing his focus, great defense, that kind of player. But the organizations have to see it. They have to see it. Um, and obviously, he's proved himself to be a great player, more of a scorer, great rebounder, 9, 10 rebounds a game, which is still good too. But he could have given you more than that if that would have been his focus. But oftentimes in these professional organizations, as much as they say they like development, they're not development. They just want you to be what they want you to be when they want you to be it. If certain coaches, certain assistant coaches don't connect with you, they don't, you know, in a certain way, they don't connect with your family, they just don't connect with you in a certain way, then all of a sudden they start to write you off and they hold you to a different standard. And I think that's what they clearly did to Julius Randle because that guy was, you could clearly see he would be the player he is today. It was very clear. Brandon Ingram it was you really didn't know because this guy looked like it was just all about him. He was going to put it up no matter what. He had the skill, the talent, he had everything, but he was just, whenever he got that ball, he was putting it up. He never made the extra pass. He never made the IQ play like the winning play. He made shots that would win, but the IQ play, um, great player, excellent player, though. Uh, but LeBron was stacked. So this period in this 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 here at, at the Lakers, it was a much of a transition. He ends up winning a championship in the bubble. But he has some great players, a guy like Rajon Rondo, who doesn't get as much credit as he should. Rajon was, when you watched him play, like when they played the Lakers, and the Celtics, I Rajon was the player. Paul Pierce was no joke. Um, the other players were no joke. I'm saying other players. I mean other Hall of Famers were no joke. But Rajon at that time was special, special, special. Um, unstoppable off the dribble. He really made that team work. And so um, my point is that he had Ray John on that team as well. And Ray John was just as much a part of winning as LeBron was. And he actually won them some playoff games and um, a finals game. So when you look at what happened with the Lakers in the bubble, yes, it was great. And that's where LeBron's going to win every time is where he's going to do what other players won't do in this current game that we play now because everybody plays AAU. Everybody puts up shots. Everybody works on a handle. So they're going to have the skill. You're going to have the skill no matter what, because that's just what they do. They're all shooting for the million dollar, $2 million, $10 million contract. So that is what these players do. That's what the parents are forcing them to do. So they're going to have a skill set. Sometimes not of their own doing. They're just going to have it because this is what we are doing to make the money. So these players are going to have the skill set, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have the mindset. They have the skill set, but do they have the mindset? So that's the difference. So when you look at LeBron James' career, special, special. I mean, the longevity, unmatched, scoring leader, unmatched, assists. I mean, this guy rebounds. He's done it all. Wins. I'm going to get to it. LeBron James. To be a big guy, 6'9", 
235 to 270, 260, depending on how he's training his body, right? How wore down, how much energy, how he's managing himself. Big, explosive. You can't even imagine. Most people can't even imagine this level of athlete. It's specifically on a basketball court with control of the ball, dribbling it, coming full speed at you at 18 miles an hour, behind the back, taking off from behind the dotted line. I mean, you, 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 NBA players are some of the guys that only know it unless you've seen it. So, myself, again, I've played it in multiple different sports. So, I could say I'm an athlete that even your best athletes ever to do it can do some of the things that, that I do, that I play in multiple sports, the level that I could do it in multiple different disciplines. So, when you understand athletic movement, the training, you can really understand LeBron. And LeBron James just might be the greatest player. I'm not going to say, I'm not saying it yet. We're going to get to it. I'm, I'm going to talk about Michael Jordan. I'm going to talk about Michael Jordan. Um, so we're going to get to it. So now, when you move to Michael Jordan, I mean, this guy, so we go back to LeBron James. He plays 79 games, 20 points a game, 41% field goal from, from on, on the twos, 29% percent from three, 75 percent from the free throw line. Okay? So now you go to Michael Jordan, first year, first year, 51 percent field goals. 51 percent with all the banging, all the body. And I could clearly say I played fo football. I played corner. I played corner. Again, I've talked about that before. I played corner, but at that elite level. And I can say basketball, playing at collegiate level or playing with professional guy that can play back in the day, that was more physical than being a, a cornerback, professional cornerback by far, because you're just on an island covering. And yeah, you got to be physical enough to come up and hit a 220, 245, 250 pound running back one to three times, maybe, if you're in a, if you're, if you're, Line doesn't do its job, but if you're physical and strong and you built your body up, you can take that. You learn how to take the hits. You learn angles and different things. Um, and it doesn't, it's not a physical game. It's an explosive, explosive game. It's an explosive game that requires massive explosion, unlike any other. Massive change of direction. Massive just, just explosion in an instant of a second. Dash for it, that. Is, but as far as physicality, getting bruises and everything, oh, man, basketball during Jordan's time was physical. And people don't understand that, how physical it was. Getting a knee in the thigh, coming through the lane, getting the knee on the thigh, coming up, somebody undercutting you, all the crazy stuff that was okay in basketball during Jordan's era. Through all levels, collegiate, it was just, it wasn't, that's not how the game should be played because what it allowed to do is people that didn't have the skill set could step on this court and they could have an impact just by the fact of fouling players that could actually play. So Jordan, first year, has 82 games played, 50%, 84% from the free throw. His, his three percentage isn't good. It was 17%, but that's shooting. He wasn't even shooting one a game. He wasn't even shooting a three sometimes. In that time, shooting the three was considered a bad shot. It just was. He averages 6.5 rebounds, 5.9 assists. So this would have been what LeBron's would have been third or fourth year in the league. So Jordan's 28.2, 50%, 84% from the line, 82 games. You step back and you go LeBron, let's say his fourth year in the league, third, third year in the league. LeBron is 48%. Third year, 47.6, 33 to 31% from the three-point line, shooting basically five to four three-pointers a game. And 
73 and 69 percent from the free throw from the free throw line averaging seven assists basically seven and six assists those year his third year he averaged 31 points a game fourth year 27 points a game pretty comparable right but Jordan is a little bit more efficient right just just slightly more if you're comparing them. slightly more efficient um, now, when you look at it, you say you add that three ball in there, and the three ball just wasn't a focus. So, again, you go two, and you look at the physicality of the game, you look at the free throw percentage, you transfer that to now, where those fouls Jordan would be getting called foul for there. He's going to the free throw line shooting 84%, and Jordan's going to the free throw line nine times a game. Third year, 11, 12 times a game, shooting 85% back then. I mean, he's easily averaging 35, 40 points in his early year, easily. This isn't when he when he really went just insane focus, like I'm going to prove to you that I'm the best player in the league. Like his third and fourth years in the league, Jordan, you're looking at, again, 53% on 24 shots, 80, 10, 84% free throw percentage on 10 times to the line. Five rebounds, six assists. It's almost similar, but he's 35, 37 points a game. I mean, you can't, you, these, are, these are video game numbers. Video game numbers. And how, if he can't shoot the three at the end of his career, Jordan is all of us shooting, shooting 30, he's averaging 32% from three. He could shoot it and it wasn't even his focus. Give Jordan that ability to say, oh, the three has now become part of the game. He's putting up 1,500 shots a day. He's coming back trying to shoot 45%. His mindset is he's going to try to be a better shooter than, than Steph Curry. And given his track record, he's going to get close. Because that's what Jordan was always trying to prove a point. And he didn't say it. He did it. He didn't say it. He did it. Oh, you don't think I'm the best player in the league? 37 points. Oh, you don't you 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 guys think I just hauled the ball in 1989? I'm gonna play 81 games, shoot 54% from from field goal percentage. Now I'm up in my threes. I shoot 85% from the free throw line. I average eight rebounds, eight assists, almost a triple point on 32 points per game. These are crazy numbers. Crazy numbers. This was only on 22 shots a game. Only on 22 shots a game. I mean, Jordan was different. Was different. You look at this. 51% field goal percentage. First year, 45, 48, 53, 53.8, 52, 53.9, 51, 49, 41, 49, 48, 40. I mean, the players would be happy with it. They, they'd be elated if they were shooting these percentages. Like 41% is acceptable now. That used to not be acceptable. That was like unacceptable. You don't get to shoot if you're shooting 41% field goal percentage. Jordan comes back at Washington. Now he's at 41.6%, 22 points a game, 5.7 rebounds, 5 assists. Towards the end, but you don't realize how good he was back then. 41%, believe me, he was not happy with that, but now, or 42, 41.6%, that's acceptable. This is an all-star player in today's game. 5.7 rebounds, 5.2 assists, 1.4 steals on 2.7 turnovers? Efficient. 
And the problem with players in general, see the, oh man, this is good because see the problem is that players, it's coming out more so, but a lot of these players aren't as disciplined as you think they are. The average fan thinks, oh, everybody, they're dedicated, they're, they're this, no. A lot of these players are just 6'9", 6'10", 6'8", 6'7". They could dribble and they could shoot. But discipline, IQ, understanding the game, being prepared, giving you, I mean, being a dog out there, man, it's a rare, rare few that do that. That's the problem. That, that is the problem is people don't understand what they're seeing. And sometimes it's not for you to understand just to enjoy the game, just to enjoy it. So when you look at this, you say, Michael Jordan and LeBron James, where is the difference? So now let's compare them. Apples, that, let's go. Let's, there's a feature set. I have a feature set here in data science. This is what you have. You have a feature set, right? And so you create a feature set of what does greatness look like, right? In this feature set, let's, there's 22 different features for the criteria of greatness. That, that's what data science is, right? You have this feature set. And so we have... NBA chips, finals MVPs. So I added up all these different categories. NBA chips, finals MVPs, season MVPs, all NBA first, second, third, defensive player of the year, all NBA defensive first, second, and third, slam dunk. Why is it slam dunk in here? Because it's good for the league, right? And that was always a big thing. It's like, okay, how can you bring help the league? How could you show your greatness how could you put yourself on the stage it was always important now players don't feel like they need to do a lot of extra things because they feel like they've already arrived not all but a lot they feel like they've already arrived so doing a lot of these extra things no i'm gonna just play i've already i'm already a first round draft pick i'm already the guy so i don't need to do this that was just for back in the day. And that's what made people like Jordan so special is he was always willing to show up and show what he had in every situation. Greatness. I'm great in everything. That was Jordan. I'm going to show you. I'm not just going to leave it up to your imagination. Well, I could win the dunk contest. If I entered it, I could win it. So I'm going to just let you guys think that I could win it. I'm not going to actually think that you see me compete because I might not do that well. And believe it or not, some guys feel like they never verbalize it, but they feel like that. And if you know players, if you competed at that high level, you know athletes. You can read them. That's what you're doing all the time. I'm telling you, you great. This is what this is about. So let it's you great. You are great. Yes, these guys are great. Oh, man, so good. But everyone, all athletic greatness, sometimes doesn't see 10 years or five years in the NBA, right? In the MLB baseball. Sometimes it just doesn't see it. And that's how life sees you. That greatness is how can you achieve in all areas? And that's one of the things that make Michael Jordan special is you can, you can see it. LeBron, don't, don't let me... I'm not taking nothing away from him because LeBron, man, it, LeBron, I mean, if I said a person, LeBron, you discipline, puts in the work, invests in himself, has his life in order. Is he perfect? No. Is any of them perfect? No. No. But, man, he know he got a compass. He knows what compass to come back to to, to produce these right results, these successful results. That's LeBron James. Let's keep going.
So if you look at these categories, Jordan wins, NBA chips, finals MVPs, season MVPs, LeBron wins in all NBA appearances, Jordan wins in defensive player of the year, all NBA first team defense, Jordan's got two slam dunks, 10 season points leaders, three steals leaders. That was just Jordan. See, people miss this. This stat right here, and, 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 and the defensive, this is what he's telling Magic and Isaiah. Great. I mean, I, I, I like these players. Isaiah, that's what he's trying to tell. I'm, no, I'm great in every area. I'm great in all these areas. I play defense, too. That's what he was saying. I play defense, too. Don't, 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 don't come with that nonsense on me. I'm great in all this. I'm the best. I'm a proven. Oh, now you just say I just score? Okay, now I'm going to win. You just say I win? Now I'm going to win a championship. No, but if you guys went back to back, I'm going to win back to back to back. And then I'm going to come back and win back to back and back again to just annihilate the debate. That's Jordan. LeBron's like, oh, I'm going to do this longer than anybody did this. I'm going to do this longer than anybody could do this. Number one in career points, number four in assists. You got to be kidding me. 33 in career rebounds, number eight in steals. But Jordan is number four in steals. Woo. Jordan is number five in steals with like six less seasons played. Number five in career points with six less. I mean, Jordan, you, I mean, you, you, you slip on this guy. And then you have best playoff win record. Now, in all of these feature sets, so we're just going playoff percentage. LeBron actually wins over Jordan. Jordan was just a little above 50% on his playoff wins. Had the best season record better than Jordan did. But see, Jordan was saying, we want to beat that best season record before that was 70 and 13 or 70 and 14, something, 70, something like that. So Jordan wanted to show that. He was always willing to prove a point, not talk about it. So now let's talk about what makes LeBron James great. What sets LeBron James apart? Greatness over the long haul. Man, you can't, you cannot, you cannot underestimate LeBron James his ability to win over the long haul, winning in multiple environments, winning in Cleveland first as a young kid, a young, a, still a child. Then he comes, goes to Miami, wins. Comes back to Cleveland, wins. Comes back to Lakers, wins. Greatness, greatness. He took on the burden of carrying the league and over-delivered, over-delivered. When everything, the league was on his back, they needed him. And he brought Cleveland historical championship. A historical championship. And all the things. I mean, LeBron is great family. Bronny's a baller. I mean, high IQ. He's passed it down. I mean, LeBron is greatness. I mean, yeah. But let me get to Jordan. What sets Jordan apart? Regular season MVP, scoring title, first team all defensive player, led playoffs in scoring, finals MVP, and wins the championship. And he wins the championship. And what is that saying? That's saying that I'm not the best just because I won the MVP. I'm not the best just because I scored the tourist title. I'm not the best just because I played defense two and win a scoring title. I'm not the best just because I'm leading the playoffs in scoring. I'm not the best just because I'm finals MVP. I have the most fun. I'm the best because my way won. I proved it. I was the best in the regular season. I won the scoring title. I dominated the band with scoring and defense. Dominated the playoffs with scoring and defense. Got to the finals and won a championship. He is responsible for the success of the league today. Period. Look, 
Michael Jordan is, is responsible. And one of the most important things is that Michael transformed how America and the world viewed black man on multiple levels. He made dark black men. Now they're looked at as successful, as leading, as intelligent. Michael was articulate. He was excellent personified. And he won. And he won six times. And winning regular season MVP, scoring title MVP, first time all, to all defensive player, led the playoffs in scoring, finals MVP, and a championship. He did that four times. Only person to ever do that, which meaning I'm doing everything, all the criteria that's set forth that says I'm great, I'm the best, but I win too. So I'm um, regular season MVP, scoring title, first team all def defensive player, best record in the league. I'm showing up every night, giving you guys value, leader in the playoffs, finals MVP, and a championship, and I do that four times. No other person has ever done that. And then he brought all the money in today's game. He transformed a social construct that everybody benefits from. LeBron James benefits from that. All these guys benefit from now. In his time, you couldn't talk about the things you, you, you want to talk about. You could talk about politics. You could talk about those kind of things. Michael did it and then after built a brand. And he hires people. Michael, by far, if you're just looking at statistically what is the standard of winning, he did it four times. He did it with four times and won a chip, which is equal to LeBron James four times winning the championship, even though he won it in multiple places. But the key is Michael never left. He just stayed right in there. And see, everyone looks at winning as just like, oh, you go and you win, and now you'll get credit for it. No, winning is the journey. Winning is the journey. Everybody has a different role. If you saw Charles Barkley in his heyday, oh man, this dude was a was a beast. He was actually, at times, I was like, man, is he better than Michael Jordan in some years when he was at Philly? You you got to watch these guys. You got to watch the games, like every single game, like. These guys were on a mission every single game, every night. Like guys like Iverson, like every night they was on a mission. The game now is different. We benefit. It's, it's entertainment. So a, a lot of times the goal is to get to the final level. Let's just get to where we really make the money. Let's get to the playoffs. Let's get to the, the finals, right, where we can really show up. That's where the money, that's where it's at. But the, you look at Michael, this guy played 82 games. 82 games. Even at the Washington Wizards his last year, he played 82 games. If the comparison is close, it's close. But I would even throw Kobe in there before, you know, competing Le LeBron. And Kobe, Le Kobe stayed in there and won five chips with the same team. And yeah, he wanted to get out. But he won five, went all through the mess, averaging 35 points a game, going through all this stuff, going through the struggle. He stayed in there. He stayed in it. He didn't try to manufacture anything. He tried to manufacture for the team, for the team he was at, but he didn't jump ship. And I think that's the part, that's just a small part that says LeBron, we need to do a little bit more in order to surpass even Kobe and to surpass Michael Jordan. That's in my opinion, but even the data still shows that Michael, when you look at the data, 10 to 9 when looking at the feature set.
That's it. I'll see you soon. Now, this is about life and how you view life, too. Don't leave yet. One of the things about life is that, see, LeBron, I believe, he became, while he's everything you want a player to be, he became so concerned with what the media, what everybody else is doing, and that leads you astray. But that's the world we live in where people come so consumed with external. And now it's being led astray because there's a narrative that wants to talk about him being better, even his agent, Rich Paul. And he does Rich Paul doesn't go on any channel and speak on this unless he gets the okay. They're in alignment. They're in a strategy. They're, there's a strategy to everything that they do. And LeBron just needs to rest and be in it, swim in it, in his success. He doesn't need to say it. Just, man, play ball. Let the chips fall where they've been. Be great. Go out and prove it. Go stay with the Lakers. Win another four chips. Play points. Get your assists up. Build the team. So on to the team. If LeBron won another four chips, now people would say, yeah, he's pro potentially he's a, he's, he's, he's the greatest player ever. Now, that would sound ridiculous, but see, that's the mindset of a Michael Jordan. Like, I'm just going to over-deliver so there's no debate. So there always could be a standard. And you can't disrespect LeBron at all. But if even if we look at the numbers, you could say Jordan did it, did more. He did it. He did more than LeBron, more efficiently. More efficiently. So that's my Jordan, hands down. But don't ever disrespect LeBron, the greatness of LeBron. This guy is, I mean, a great example of longevity and greatness and how to win, how to keep showing up year after year after year. So one of the things you can learn from this Michael Jordan and LeBron James comparison is how they approach their careers. Michael Jordan approached it from a truly competitive standpoint to where he was going to show his value and eventually he was compensated for that. But for years, Jordan played for the Bulls underpaid. But Jordan tried to change the narrative or he changed the narrative by his play. Rarely did you hear him vocalize these things or try to create narratives. And in today's world, we all and everyone, and specifically LeBron, you can see how his team or those around him are so concerned by the external forces. And when you do that, you can tend to lose the essence of why you do it. And I believe that's the one little thing that LeBron could just say, hey, look, I'm just going to go out and prove this. I'm just going to lay it on the line and at the end of the day, let them talk about it. Because it's very hard to convince people that are going to be against you anyway. While I've said that I think Michael Jordan is the better player, you may have thought that I was going to say it was LeBron. I believe Jordan is probably one of the greatest, the greatest athletes in the last hundred years. And there's only maybe five people I would list in that. Um, and that's Jackie Robinson, Jesse Owens. See, these, these people that really had to lay it on the line, it was totally different of what they were battling socially and then what they accomplished in their life. And so it's not always the trophies or the points. It's what you had to overcome. Jordan faced a whole different beast. You can see it now where I'm not against this, but a 17, 18-year-old 
who've maybe been working just hard the last four years, they're getting NIL deals, as Deion Sanders mentioned, right? It's not necessarily that they've done more than people in the past, and not that they should, but that you just got to understand that we're in a time where this visibility makes things seem bigger than what they are, and often it can derail you and get you off of your divine vision. And LeBron, and even his team, I would say spend more time doing what you've been doing, building a great business, raising his family, and going out there again three or four more chips. I'm not saying that's what it would take, but if he did that, I, I think he probably would be considered the greatest player ever. And Michael Jordan might say it too. Michael Jordan might say he's in definitely in a conversation. But at this point, when things were always measured on championships and how they did it, Jordan was dominant in every sense of the way. Points, defense, controlling the pace, wins in every way. And he beat the great, he beat those teams. He beat Detroit. He beat the Lakers. He beat Magic and the Lakers. He beat Detroit. Detroit was, if they was considered a washed up team, they're a washed up team because, hey, they got wore down by this team that kept give, taking them to six and seven games. It starts to look bad when the only way you can win is if you can foul a person. It starts to look real bad. In many ways, it starts to look shameful, and I think that's what happened with Detroit in many ways. It's like the only way we can beat this team is if we knock Michael Jordan's head off every time he comes to the hole. Maybe he doesn't get a serious injury, but maybe he doesn't. Instead of playing 35 points in a game, he plays 25 points, and that's just enough that we need. You can do that, and you can play that. But then again, that nullifies really what competition is about because you could take a person off the street and they can do that. And I think that is why the league changed. One reason was because of Jordan. It changed because of Jordan. Everyone is benefiting from Jordan. And again, in my vote, I still think LeBron has some work to do just to pass Kobe because Kobe stayed and got five chips. He stayed with that team, stayed with losses, dominated, missed some MVPs. They still gave him to, you know, Shaq missed some MVPs. As great as Steve Nash was, going out in the conference finals, conference semifinals, there's no way he should have won two, two MVPs. There's no way. Chauncey Billups was better than Steve Nash. As great as Steve Nash is, great player, great. I'm not, I'm not taking nothing away. But when you just measure things and you don't really understand what you're, how, how and what you're measuring, then you get led astray. LeBron is great. LeBron, you're great. But Michael Jordan paved the way for you. And it's just not so cut and clear. Yeah, you have more points, more assists more rebounds, but did that quantify to wins? Did that quantify to championships? So did your method quantify to the ultimate goal? Michael Jordan can say, yeah, I, I shot a lot. I, I went to the hole a lot. I didn't pass. I was screaming at you guys because you guys didn't want to do it. Maybe some of y'all wanted to drink. You wasn't disciplined. Like, a lot of athletes aren't disciplined. So I, I would have got along with Michael great because I would have been yelling. I did the same thing. I didn't like undisciplined teammates. I hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Despised it. So when, you, when you're serious about your craft and you want to win and you know you have an opportunity to change your life, the organization, a city, it, as well as there's people that are believing in you, riding on you, it gets serious. So that is my assessment. That is the data science, the science. As you saw, I showed you a feature set. 
that's just how you attack it. A feature set would be huge, like Amazon has a feature set with thousands, hundreds of thousands of different features to know how to target the right customer. This is just a small feature set to see, okay, what feature set could we use to say who the best player is? What is the data? What is the science? And now what is the story that we see within the data? Soletics, and I'm out. The Soletics Way, a guide for sport and life. Mental, physical, spiritual, technological, and strategic resource to help you dominate the challenges of life. I am here as a guide to assist you in overcoming in the mind, identifiable so and unforeseen circumstances that Use deter you from your vision and purpose for life. And when that a voice work, to encourage you to reach and maintain enough, peak performance I will adapt, in sport and life despite the circumstances you face. I said get up.